Okay, we are gonna go live. We're gonna go, we're gonna use 80 and then 320 grit sandpaper. All right, that's what we're doing today. Just hanging out, doing a little sanding, making friends, and uh, learning some tips and tricks. All right, I'm gonna go around the edge, gonna hit the center panel where it's raised, and I've already sanded this side. Then I'm gonna hit it with 320. Then I'll be doing the, all the detailed sanding. All right, so with no further ado, let's do this. Yeah, this is 80 grit. <laughs> All right, I want to see how clear and what you're able to see, how well you can see what I'm doing. All right, whoa, let's not knock over my bench. What's going on? All right. Look how quick that 80 took that off of there. Now it's smooth. Like I showed on my last video, there's no scratches here. But I'm going to put more of a polished finish on this sanding. And that's the end product. If I keep going over it with 320. <laughs> Now, yesterday on my video, when I was sanding, when I was sanding here, I was overlapping and I caught. And I was catching this edge. You, you want to stay from that. That was a mistake on my part because if you're overlapping and you're catching this edge, you can wear this edge down. And you can mess up this detailing here on this outer edge. It'll swoop down. That'll, you'll bevel it because it's raised slightly higher than the outer edges in the outer part of this frame okay and so now i'm going to hit the center part um I'm, I'm this is a carpet pad okay and uh, it gives it some cushion and it holds it in place keeps it from sliding all over okay now you want this you want this flat on all the flat area. Now this is for the beginner instructions. When I'm sanding here, you don't want to catch here, all right? Because you can see this edge, all right, that... It's catching, so you want to stay away from this edge. You've got plenty of space. You know, just stay right there. Just come past the raised part of the panel, and you're fine. Just don't touch anything else other than the surface you're sanding on. Okay, now I'm going to point something else out here. When this door was originally stained, all right, you can see how dark this is down in the 
grain, all right? The reason that's so dark is because when this door was originally stained, they went over it with a walnut, wiped the walnut off. They may have even lightly sanded the surface, left the black walnut in the grain, and came back with golden oak and went over it in golden oak. That's the staining technique for custom staining. It enhances the grain. Pretty slick, huh? All right, I'm telling the t I'm telling you the inside tricks now, guys, gals. So, if you want real dark grain, hit it with a light walnut or a dark walnut. Go over it immediately. Wipe it off the surface. Let it dry. You may, if you want, then you can kind of hand sand or quickly palm sand like a 320. Go over the surface, clean it up. Then go back over it and go over it with your golden oak and your wood grain will really stand out really nice. It'll be enhanced and you'll have a custom stain job. All right. That was for free. Okay. Now, 80s coming off and the 320 is going on. I get the package open. It's kid proof, child proof. Uh, uh, all right, now I don't want to tear up this package. It's going to make me tear the package up. Well, maybe not. Okay, we're getting her open. Okay, we're getting her open. All right, 320. All right. You can see here, 320, all right? I hope you can see that because I can't see the screen very well. Now, let's listen to the difference in the sound of 80 and 320. 80? It means, I'm sorry, 320. Okay, 80. All right, much rougher. The sound tells on itself all right now getting this lined up so the pads fairly equal it should be better than that but it is what it is okay <laughs> All right, I don't know if you can see the difference, but this is the camera's getting hot. All right, let's look at the difference here. I see the change. Let me show you the difference when I flip it over. Let's see if we can tell the difference in the appearance here after being hit with the 320. Now let's look at the other side. Remember what this looks like. All right, you see how much coarser the wood grain is. Okay, the 320 helps to close up the wood grain and make it smoother. All right, so it takes the the black stain better. I won't resist it so much because it's not as coarse. When I get done, it'll be a smoother surface all the way around. And it's kind of like if you were to put a wood conditioner on it um, to make it smooth and so that the stain goes on more equal and uh, has an overall better stain. This basically does the same thing without having to buy extra material, ex spend extra money for another product. 320 is closing up the wood grain. <laughs> All right, I'm going across the grain to catch it because this is oak has such a coarse grain. It's incredible how coarse this grain can be. 
a lot coarser than most other woods, but it's a very hard wood all at the same time. Um, hard, like a rock. So it's a little bit more forgiving than other woods. Okay, cherry wood is also another hard wood. But we're not dealing with cherry, I'm just saying. So we're, so we're making it a smoother wood grain so it takes this black better. All right, I think that's good. All right, it feels nice and smooth. It looks really nice, looks really smooth. All right, now let, let's, let's take a look at this wood grain. My device is getting hot. All right, see the wood grain right here? See how coarse it is? All right, I'm going to sand it. You're going to watch some of that coarseness disappear. The coarseness just changed, I'll show you. It didn't take much. Okay, but look at that right in here. It's a lot smoother. The coarseness isn't as heavy. You can go back and do a replay and you'll see the difference. All right, just move that cursor back to what I showed you in the beginning and you'll see the difference. All right. <laughs> Okay, now we can get that a little closer. All right, now that's pretty good. Now I'm going to catch in here. This has got a little hollowed out spot, all right? Kind of like a cove almost, or like a ramp, all right? So in my video yesterday, I was showing the exact angle that I uh, use to do this. Um, you can refer to that. Um, but you're going to get the top view. Yesterday I had the camera to the side and you can see underneath and you could see the face of the sandpaper here at this angle. All right. But uh, I'm going to use the 80 grit for that. And got to be careful, very careful. Okay. Because you don't want to mess with the detailing here. You don't want to catch it on the edge over here. You want everything to be square and uh, remain original. Okay, so what I do is, I'm going to bring this over here where you can see this. When I come down to this corner, because you can see this corner right here, all right? To this corner over here. I kind of turn this at an angle and I get as close as I can here. Then I come back, so I have to hand sand this area in here, all right, on every corner. And uh, that's just to give you a heads up. All right. I got to get my head down in here so I can see my angle. Keep it flat and follow that angle. Lock your wrist into place. Lock your elbow into place. Lock your shoulder into place. All right. Get the feel. All right. And you go. <laughs> You got to keep it flat. Right now the pressure is back here. I'm going to have to take it into this area here where it's kind of swooped. All right, kind of concaved. But you lock it and you hold it at that angle and you keep it flat. All don't tilt. All right, that's done. 
All right. You can see the stain. All right, and you can see where the stain's now removed. Other side. All right, now this carpet pad keeps this from moving on me, or otherwise this would be sliding all over the table. It could even cause scratches in the wood. So this is what you want to use. Carpet pad, piece of carpet. <laughs> Almost. Now I gotta push it into here to catch this coved out area. I've got to push it into there slightly. All right. And I gotta bring the sander, this edge, up about half inch so it takes in fills in this area better all right as you can see on this other side i didn't do that and you can still see the stain down in there all right <laughs> that's all it hits there you go it's gone now let's catch the end. Okay, I got to curve this up a little more as I pull it in. All right. This is where I got to angle my my palm sander is here at the corner. All right. Okay. Now let's catch this other side. Then we'll take care of the rest of the detailing in here by hand. Okay. All right. Now, take another 80 grit that's already been used, wore out, and we'll catch all the detailing. All right, and I'm kind of coming down at an angle. As I'm coming into that corner. And this here will get right down into that corner here. Because this corner is hard to get into. Alright. And I'm not going cross grain. You notice. Alright. I'm kind of sliding down at an angle like this. Or else I'll leave scratches if I, go, if I cross the grain. Alright. You gotta work to take those grain to cuts out to, in the grain if you cross sand, and that's a lot more work. Okay. No, same here. That's getting kind of wore out there. Okay, time to switch to another side. It's fresh. All right.
All right. RG, Vicky Davis, thanks for being here. Uh, RG Homestead, Will. All right, let me turn this uh, camera around. You don't see my forehead. All right. Now I was working on this detailing right in here, the standing. And uh, so back on, live and well. All right, so we're going to get this in here. Okay, now we're going to get the corner of this panel down in here. Okay. We're just hanging out, making friends. Why not? RG Homestead just hit his 1K. He just did a big giveaway. And uh, congrats to RG. Um, Australia Community Tours. He just hit his 10K in a year and a half. He's doing it right. Whatever it is he's doing, he's doing it right. He's legit. Community Tours Australia. Hit his 10K. Amazing. Great supporter. I'm here to tell you. Probably how he got his 10K, being such a great supporter. All right, I got that now. Let's get to catch this flat. All right, this edge. Okay, you don't want to sand your panel. You want to sand this, this inner edge right here on the frame. You want to remove the stain from there, open up the grain. Remove the sealer, the stain, and the, and the clear coat, whatever it may be. Whether it's polyurethane, whether it's lacquer, whether it's tongue oil, whatever it may be, we want to remove that, open up the grain. Okay, so we're keeping it flat. You can't use your, even if I had the old-fashioned jitterbug orbital, um, Palm sander, I would not use that here. Would not. I'd have to do it by hand. Or else you'll mess up this edge right here. Okay. All right. I got to work down in this edge here. And it pays to redo your cabinet door, especially if you have solid wood. I don't care if it's maple, pine. Um, I don't care if they're solid wood. They're worth taking the time to redo. You know, I could just put a clear coat on top of this and this will look really nice. Maybe I'll do that just, just, just to show you since for those that will be here. In case those that don't know, nobody's don't have that much experience with woodworking or sanding or anything. All right. If all you wanted to do is take the shortcut, all right, you've sanded off the stain, the clear coat, all right, it still has some stain left in this wood. Okay, it's still lightly stained. All right. So just, I'm going to have to sand this off, but... For the viewing audience, I'm going to spray this with some polyurethane. So you get an idea. This is all, and you can keep it this way. You could do your whole door and leave it just like this. I'm going to show you. Just sand off the old stain and clear coat it. Watch, watch this. Look at the color that, co that comes through. All right. And I'm going to show you what this looks like when it's dry. Okay, this will give you an idea of what it's going to, if, if I was just to sand the doors down, put a clear coat on them, how they're going to finish out. All right.
Let you decide if you like it. People do this all the time. All right, I'm going to show you it's wet. Okay. Up close and personal. You can see where it's dry. All right, and you can see the color that just came back to it after spraying it with the clear coat. All right. That's all you got to do is sand off the old stain, clear coat it. The stain that's still left in the wood will come back. It'll be much lighter, but you don't have to do anything else. Let this dry and then sand it with some 320, which will do. Okay, well, I'm going to set this to the side. I've got one more door to sand. Okay. This wasn't planned, but this works. It's, all right, so I'm going to put this aside. It's still wet, okay? And uh, we're going to come back to this when I'm done sanding. All right. Now, got my mask on. Get my mask on. Okay. 80 grit. All right. Remember, you want to stay away from this raised part of the panel. Keep it just on your outer edges of your door frame, all right? And keep it flat. That is a felt pad for the corners. All right. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little repair job on this panel. Now, if I was to hand sand this, the coarseness of this wood grain you see in here would remain, all right? But I'm going to palm sand it. It'll tighten it up, close it up, and it won't be so coarse. Um, it just depends on the look you're looking for, all right? It'll be smoother and not so prominent. And it will receive the stain better. Okay, and I will show you it's still coarse. But the pores, they're not open as much. See the pores in here and the grain, they're closed. They were fully open because they just lightly sanded on the first time. All right, you can see the pores here, how open they are, all right?
course and open. Sanding them closes up the pores in the wood grain on the oak. I could sand this by hand, all right? It would take a little bit longer, but you see how the wood grain, it's still open, but the pores are closed quite a bit more than what they were. You can do a playback on the video here and see the difference and compare the two, all right? Same thing over here. See how closed the pores are now. All right, now look, now look at, this is the comparison. This is unstained, un unsanded, but you see the pores? You see how open these pores are? All right, I'm going to palm sand, I'll hand sand this to show you the difference. All right, we're going to hand sand this. Okay. So when they sanded these doors in the beginning, they did a light sand, all right? But they left the wood grain coarse. All right. And this should reveal enough of the wood grain for you to see better what it is I'm referring to. Okay, on palm sanded. This is this is hand sanded. All right, and you can see with the right angle. You can see the pores, and they're open. All right. I'm not sure what's working the best because I can't see. My screen's not the clearest right now, so I'm hoping you can see the pores, how open they are. All right. And here it is again, unsanded. I'm trying to show you the angle so you can see how open the pores are. All right. So let me put the palm sander on it. Let me show you this one more time, and I'll hit it with the palm, and I'll show you. Okay, I'm going to close those pores up a bit more. And remember, you want to keep the same contour. You don't want to change it. Okay, now, there it is. You can see the difference. You should be able to see the difference here. All right, in the pores, the wood grain. Um, so they're tighter, they're closer, and not as rough. All right, let the way they're just smooth where the palm sanders hit it, all right? All right. All right, let's get the sand in this.
that was feeling it was feeling all right it's wore out let's get it done <laughs> This door has quite a bit of stain left in it still. Uh, you know, you could even take your doors and go over them with the 320 or a 220, a 120, sand it down, take off the clear coat, take off some of the stain, and re clear coat it. It's, it can be that simple. Okay, to give it a brand new look. And you do it on the face frame of your cabinet as well. Um, which cuts your work down in half. Um, it's not a little more than half. Just by doing that, and you look new. show you where I stopped you can see where I stopped right here okay you can see the stain and over here I was able to get a little bit closer without changing any of the detailing all right and that's that so I need to hit catch this in here a little bit more that's what's happening here <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Now you may not not notice, but I'm actually taking this and I'm putting a slight angle on it and I'm exaggerating it. So I line up more with this angle here. All right. And then you just hand sand the rest. All right. Now, here, I'm going to have to turn it this way just a little bit so that it goes, coincides here with this 45 degree angle going to this corner over here, all right? So from this corner to this inside corner, all right? This corner at the top to the bottom inside corner here on the trim, okay? So, this is flat. If I came flat, I would come right over this edge. All right, so I go from here to turning it like so. All right, but I got to get my head down here where I can see it. But you're not seeing, and it's slight. It's not, it's very slight of a turn. <laughs> Okay, and over here, you can see I stopped right in this area in here. All right, you can see where the stain starts and stops. All right, that's as close to the corner as I got. I can get a little more here at the top without doing any damage. Okay. Little over here. Okay, I can get go back in there and hand sand that. Same thing applies here on this outer corner. You go from this in upper corner here on the butts right to the bottom corner over here. Okay, so you gotta turn it at an angle. Hey, I messed that corner up. I just put the corner back right now. All right, let me show you. I just had to recreate that corner. That's what I was just doing because I ran over the top of it. But you can see that this corner is right back where it goes here. Okay. Up close and personal. Had to put it back. That's not easy to do. All right. <laughs> Now, I will show you this one, all right, I'll point it out. Now, this is this is this one here, all right, you can, you can see the edge. Okay, right here. All right, and that's what we're saving, preserving. So I'm turning this, at this again at the slight angle, match it up.
Okay, again, got to be careful. This is the corner I just created. Yeah, that's not too bright of an idea. You can really mess up the detailing do that, doing that. All right. So that's why I don't. Too easy to mess up detailing up. Right now, no harm, no foul. So I'm going to leave it good enough alone. Let me tell you. I'm going to leave it good enough alone. This is live, it's not Memorex. After this live stream, I'm gonna put this on standby. You will not see this video on the main stream. It will be Hidden after the live stream. So you're, you're getting it right now, right here. This will just be in my personal collection. This is too smooth for what I'm doing. So you see how the store still wants to move on me, even with being on this pad, all right? You got to catch all the angles. All right. There's a little concave in this detailing right here at this point. And that's what I'm catching. That's why I quit sanding it with the palm. Because you could mess that up right now. I mean, quickly. Blink and it's messed up. So, um, do not do what I did with the palm sander. You'll be blaming me. Don't do that. Do not use a palm sander on this detailing on this door. All right. Then I'm going to catch this side here. All right. I'm also going to catch this edge. This, this edge at this point. All right. It's what I'm sanding as well as here. So I'm catching two edges at the same time, the one that's right down flat and the one that's on edge upright. You can also catch it this way. All right. Then I can put some downward pressure like this and clean that up real quick. All right. Catch that surface. Now catch this inside here on this outer edge. You, you don't want to sand the panel down here. Just, just this edge here, this vertical edge. This kind of rolls over. So you pick this up a hair and you float it. You'll use your fingers uh, right here to kind of slide along the panel. And that's what you're doing. And you're sanding the inside vertical edge at this point. All right. Do not, you don't want to sand the panel. You don't want to put a groove down there. It will show. And 
now I've got, because I floated it, now right now, right next down here at this edge, I got a little bit of stain and I didn't catch. So now I'm putting downward pressure flat against the panel. And I'm coming back and I'm picking that up and getting that sanded off. Bam. Now that's done. Okay. Same process all the way around. Okay. You can see the stain right down here on the panel right in this corner. All right. And the stain here on this edge here. We're going to do one at a time. It's too big of a risk to get a groove if you, if you just come and try to get both of them at the same time. Okay? Just, it's easier to float it. And I'll show you that I floated it because the stain that's on the panel will still be there when I'm done. All right, I'm using the bottom edge of my thumb as a guide in order to float the sandpaper so I do not sand that panel. Yet I get the detailing on this round over here on the inside trim, on the inside of this frame. All right, now, as you can see, all right, this has been sanded, and the stain is still down in this groove. I'm thinking you should be able to see that. All right. Stain's still there. Now, kind of at an angle. I'm going to come in here at an angle at that point. And if I do, all right, it's not getting it quite enough. I might lightly just kind of come back here like this. Just lightly, ever so slightly. And I'm watching it like a hawk. All right. So I can get in there. The stain here is just a little bit more heavier. Now it's going black. So it's not going to be critical. But I'm treating it as if I was doing... A uh, light walnut, or I was doing a golden oak, or I was doing a, you know, another stain that isn't that's where this may show up. I'm treating it the same way as if it was going to show up. So I'm paying the same amount of care so I don't groove this. All right, but black makes it a lot more forgiving. If you notice, I'm going with the grain. I'm kind of sliding in at an angle this way. All right. Forward and across. Okay. Same thing over here. Forward and across. Right into that corner. Forward and across, right into that corner. Again, keeping the detail in here. All right, now let's get this flat here. Done. Same thing over here. I'm going to check the chat. Is there anybody in the chat? Hello. Who's in the chat? Anybody in the chat? Hey, how you doing, Will? Nobody's, everybody's gone. It's okay, though. It's okay. Uh, whoever shows up uh, in this live stream, go to the live stream and uh, click on each individual icon in the comments and go to their channels and make friends. Uh, I appreciate Vicki Davis dropping in and being here. 
for sure. Okay. So, all right. Coming down. We're doing the Insane Friends tonight at 7.30. And uh, we're just going to repeat this process. Okay. Same thing, same way. Same thing, same way. Right down in there. Follow that on around. And at this corner. Oh, you're not seeing anything I'm doing. All right, turn the right down in here, picking this corner, following it down. All right, with the tip of the sandpaper. This is where it all pays off. And we're going to blow the doors off with the air hose. Okay. I'm slicing it forward at an angle as I sand. Okay, it's coming back here and do the same thing. Forward at an angle. Once I heard said a rich man on the hill looks down over the city. As he's standing there, he looks out and he's upon the city and goes, hmm, I wonder what the poor people are doing today. While he's standing there in his living room looking down upon the city, doing nothing, asking the question, I wonder what the poor are doing today. Just saying, just saying, just, you know. Food for thought. Is that kind of like that one man smoking a pipe, putting down the guy for smoking a cigar? <laughs> no. <laughs> This is the man smoking the pipe, complaining, putting down the man for smoking a cigar. Just saying, you know, food for thought. We often, what's the moral of the story? There is a moral to the story. The moral to the story is... No matter who you are, who you think you are, or what, what position you hold in life, we got blind spots, which makes us all human. No one's better than the other. We're all human. We all have faults, flaws, make mistakes, do things wrong, and no one's better than the other. That's the moral to the story. So, I wasn't sure what I was trying to say. Now you know. You know what I mean, Burn? Burn. You know what I mean? Burn. So, 
you know what I mean. Uh, let's see, I'm about done here with this. A little bit, a few little bit more sanding to do here in this corner. These corners can be fun, can be challenging. All right, so you got to get creative. Different angles, different way to sand, different approach. Well, I got a song I rewrote. You want to hear it? Oh, I'm glad you do. The song goes, it's an old song. It's been around for, man, years. But I rewrote it. So uh, you can blame me if you don't like it. All right, it goes. I don't need whole lots of money. I don't need a big fine car. I got everything that a man can want. I got more than I can ask for. I don't have to run around. I haven't changed it yet. I don't have to stay out all night. Because I've got me a sweet. A sweet Christian woman, and she knows how to treat me right. She's my baby. She's my wife. She's my baby. She's clean out of sight. Don't you know that she's mm -mm -ch -ch -mm -mm -ch -ch -mm -mm -ch some kind of wonderful? Oh, yes, she is. She some kind of wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's my baby. She's got a sweet loving woman like mine. She's my baby. And she's a sweet loving woman. She's mine. I don't need a witness. No. I don't need a witness. No. I don't need a witness. No. Because I am the witness. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right, you can comment on the song, not my singing. We already know about my singing. I got me a bucket. <laughs> I got to be my baby, some kind of wonderful. Yeah, she is, she. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I rewrote one song by Steppenwolf, too. Although, it might offend some people, though. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to offend nobody. Don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Offend nobody. You know what I'm saying? Getting on the bad side. You don't want to do that now. Over here. Right here. How, how, how. I did rewrite a song from Steppenwolf. Good, good group. Like Stepping Wolf, they they got some music. They've got the music. They back in the day, they had it going on. Music still good, but I rewrote one of their songs. You know, I had to make it Christian. I just had to. Gonna help myself. Am I getting bored? Hmm, maybe. In my other video, I show you exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> How I'm doing it. You gotta look and make sure that the pad is flat against the angle. You lock it in place, your arm, your shoulder, your wrist, and you go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Looking for adventure and whatever comes my way. Born to make it happen in the world in a loving way. I die in the sun and darkness. It's Lord is afraid. Like a true nature child, I was born, born to walk. I'm born again. Jesus set me free from my sin. Born to be holy, born to be holy, born to be holy, born to be holy. Taking and a running out out on the highway, looking for adventure, and whatever comes my way. To make it happen in the world, I'm no longer of its ways, no longer in the sun and darkness. I'm born, I've been saved. Born to be holy, born to be holy, born to be holy, born. To be holy, I've been born again. Huh? I've been free from sin. Huh? I've been born again. Uh-huh. I've been free from sin. Born to be holy, born to be holy. Hitching and a running. Out out on the highway. Running from God. Doing everything my way. Born to be holy, born to be holy, learning how good it is to be holy, hitching and running, out out on the highway, without Jesus, doing everything my way, bumping my head, running wild and confused, and shame. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Heading for prison. Oh, life on the curb. Then I found Jesus. And gave me his word. Born to be holy. Born to be holy. <laughs> All right, that's Steppenwolf song. Revised. Yeah. All right, I told you the finger. I added a little bit more to it just because I'm live. It's not Memorex, it's live. You can change it. Don't have to cut anything out. What a deal. All right, now we know about my singing. It's in a bucket. Yeah, just having some fun, you know. You can have fun and enjoy life without getting high, drinking, being buzzed. You know, I had to get buzzed, so I had an excuse to be wild and crazy kind of guy. No, I don't need an excuse. <laughs> All right. I know at some point someone's going to see this video and go, what is up with Ken? What's he on? Life, Jesus, you know. They're daring to be different the right way. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now, in order to do this, I have to push into that edge. In case, just with firm pressure.
Okay, I'm gonna have to fix the crack in this door. This door's cracked. All right, right in here, you can see this crack. I gotta glue it. All right, <clears throat> so I'll be doing that next. After I show you the door that we sprayed the clear coat on. sand all right now I'm gonna have to send it a little bit more right there okay let's get down in here well I was hoping people would be here making friends hanging out you know but then I haven't been doing that for some time so my channel is not the popping happening channel right now at all it's all good you can learn something if you come here and learn something i can help you learn something help your job to be that much easier then i will feel like i've pretty well accomplished what i'm after in the big picture here all jokes aside if I can help you learn something or help you with your project and makes your project smoother and easier, that's my purpose. <clears throat> that's what I'm doing here. I just lifted this board up at an angle. All right, so I could get in there better. So I've got it up at an angle like yay. So I can see it. You want to see what you're doing? Always want to see what you're doing. Don't forget this outer edge right here. It's easy to miss. Okay, if you do it by hand, you're sure not to de deform it. Corners can really be a pain, a challenge. Can really be a challenge. Okay, let's get this edge right here. Stuff you don't always see, it's behind the scenes. Okay. Um.
All right. Yeah, as I was saying, though, after the live stream, this is going to be put on standby. All good. All right, now let's take a look. Right, oh yeah, a little part of the leaves. Can just come back to detail? Use my hand. Now, the piece that we've all been waiting for. Okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at this piece. I'll go get it. All right, and we haven't sanded it with the 320 yet. It's smooth. It looks good. All right, you could put a couple more coats on here. About three, four coats, and this will look great. All right, but there's the difference. There you have it, all right. The raw, unsanded, unfinished, and there's your clear coat. All right, there it is. There's your difference. Okay, now we can go with the 320. 320, just to show you. Now I'm gonna sand all this off, but I just want the viewing audience to see the difference. This is all you'd have to do. If you had solid oak doors or solid wood doors, you just take off the stain, lightly sand it down, take off the clear coat, lightly sand the stain, then wipe it down, take all the, all the dust off of it, blow it off, Brush it off, take a rag and wipe it off, get all the dust off. It's clear of dust, free of dust. Okay, and you could have a re new, you have a door that would look like new. Look like you refinished it. And all you did is took off the clear coat, lightly sanded, sustained like a 220, 320. I am much more will. I'm glad Will uh, dropped in, and um, oh, don't have my glasses. RG Homestead, and let me just uh, say this: for those that see this video after the live stream, tap on the icons. Go to the live stream, tap on the little round icon in the, with the comments, and go to their channel. If you don't know them, uh, connect with them and, uh, you know, join their community. And uh, I appreciate you all for being a part of my network. So... Again, this is just furthering the process, things, you know, you don't about saying or showing or, you know, so I'm just trying to catch all the different aspects of this process and uh, 
you don't know and you're new to sanding or doing staining, hopefully this will help you. I have this playlist put together of doing my cabinet here, my bathroom cabinet, um, staining, sanding. It's all in a playlist. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to hit me up. When you got a project, hit me up. I don't mind, you know, helping you out if you're stuck or not sure what to do. I mean, you know, if I can help you, I will. If I know something about it, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. So for more tips and tricks and home improvement, renovation, uh, come back. And tell a friend, easy to, tips and tricks, etc. E-C-T, that is. Easy to, tips and E-C-T, etc. So God bless. Bye for now. Catch you on the rebound. And thank you all for being here. United, we stand united. We make it happen here on YouTube. I'll be going live tonight at 7.30. Insane Friends. Live tonight at 7.30. And usually something political. Stay tuned. Don't be scared. Bye for now. And never give up. Because there's always a way. Always. Bye for now. Bye.